Today I have the Sony A6700 and this is probably not the best lens for astrophotography, but I wanna say, I mean, you gotta use what you have. This is what I have. I also have the ZV-E1, which I've tested it. I've used it for astrophotography. I think it's a great full frame camera. It just doesn't have the megapixels. And for anyone getting into astrophotography, the, the best cameras that I would recommend are probably, if you're purely just doing astrophotography, just go with a budget camera like A7 III, the A7C, you could get the A7C2, you could get the A7 IV. Those are my favorite cameras for astrophotography work. I've just seen really good results with them. And if you use Lightroom and you use like denoise, you can actually get really incredible images with those cameras and really low noise. But what I'm gonna be talking about today is just how to do all of this with the A6700. So what you need is you need a remote control, which I actually have right here. This is Sony's remote control. I'm not a huge fan of it. I think it works fine. It, you know, it works for both stills, videos. It, and the problem is it works via Bluetooth. So this should automatically connect to your camera when you need to use it. Sometimes there's a lag, sometimes it doesn't connect perfectly, but for the most part, it works. They make other um, camera remotes that are really cheap. Uh, they are just like an infrared remote. The only problem is you have to have line of sight, right? So it has to be pointed directly at the camera to be able to use it. For most people, I would say if you can afford it, this is like $80, so I would just get this one. If I'm shooting with this 20 millimeter 1.8 lens that I have on here right now, it's usually gonna do fine. I can usually shoot like an eight to 10 second exposure and not really have any issues at all. But you are still limited to not having the bulb mode on this camera, and there are a lot of other Sony cameras that just don't have that bulb mode. Another thing that I love to do with astrophotography is blue, um, blue hour blends. I don't know if you've ever heard of them. I actually wrote an article. I'll put it in the link in the description. Blue hour blends, it's where you blend an image at blue hour. So you take one shot or you take like three different shots because you can change your exposure at blue hour. And you're mainly focusing on the foreground. And then you take another like additional shots when it gets like that astronomical twilight or pretty much darkness and you take, you blend those images together. So you have a blue hour image, you take a photo, you blend that image with like total darkness when there's no more light pretty much, it's just a dark sky. And what you get is a less noisier image. For example, let's say you're taking a picture of like a landscape or something, that landscape will have way less noise. It's just gonna look much better, less noisier. The tool that I think is the best is from PhotoPills. It's an app that you download. You actually have to pay for it. It's pretty cheap. The app actually has something It says it's called Spot Stars and it's just right when you open the app. You, what you do is you type in your focal length. So let's say I have a 24 millimeter focal length. So I'm just gonna type in 20 millimeters. Um, I'm shooting at 1.8 for my stars. So if I'm shooting on the A7 III, it would be 11 seconds for the, for the NPF rule. So let's change it to the um, A6700. Okay, so for the A6700, it says 8.3 seconds. So 11 seconds versus 8.3, and that's just because the sensor on this is way smaller than the Sony a7 III. Okay, so let's talk about settings. So the way I have it set up on my camera is I use something that isn't offered on this camera and it's so annoying. I wish they put this on the software. I don't know why they didn't. There's something in the a7 III, all the bigger cameras like the a7 IV, even the a7C, um, it's called Bright Monitor. And in the menu, you can set your camera to have Bright Monitor mode. And what it will do is you just click a button and it will it will open the shutter. It's kind of like a video, right? So it's like if you, um, a lot of times when it's really dark out, you can't see that well with your eyes. You turn on bright monitor, you set your camera on a tripod and it will brighten up everything. And so you can see everything. It's just a way better to uh, get a really good composition because a lot of times you're fumbling in the dark, you can't really see your composition, you're kind of guessing what you're taking a picture of. So this is the moon, the ocean is kind of like right there in the background, kind of hard to see it there. Um, but this is my screen, and I know you can't see it that great, but um, this is with bright monitor mode on. Actually, that's with bright monitor mode on. 
It's the coolest thing ever. I highly recommend it. If you are dedicated to astrophotography, get a full frame camera like the a7 III or the a7 IV or the a7C because they all offer bright monitoring. This camera doesn't offer bright monitoring. You just have to shoot and guess what the image is gonna look like. If you have a moon out, it's gonna be easier, but for the most part, you're just kind of guessing. And if you, I mean, if you shoot at blue hour, you're not gonna have a problem because you can see your composition. But if it gets too dark, you're gonna just be stumbling and really struggling to see what the image is gonna look like without that bright monitor mode. Um, and then I would set your manual focus. So you're gonna set your lens to manual focus and you're gonna set it to when you focus the lens, it's gonna zoom in as far up as possible. And then you can usually press the center button if you wanna zoom in further or anything like that. It's just an easy way to be able to focus on those stars. So you can get those stars really sharp. Now you can still take really good images with any camera of the stars. You just need to make sure that you can like you can see what your image is. You can bring a light with you if you breathe. Like, I always bring like a headlamp. Um, preferably, you want to get a headlamp that has a red light. That's just another accessory I, I would I always bring with me because a red light doesn't ruin your night vision. Um, let's say you're like driving down to your location. And just having your lights on or looking at the back of your monitor is gonna kind of ruin your vision. And sometimes it can take like 15 or 20 minutes for your eyes to adjust to like the dark area. So I always bring a red light with me as I'm hiking to the location or anything just to make sure just to help my eyes to adjust to that dark environment. I also changed the monitor settings on the back up here. I changed the monitor brightness to as low as possible. Sometimes this is challenging because it's hard to see like what your images is gonna look like, if it's gonna be too overexposed or underexposed, but always just set your brightness to as low as possible so it doesn't mess up your eyes as you're kind of walking around and taking pictures. And then what you can do is if you have like a bright light or a bright headlamp, um, you can shine that onto like the background. Here's my cheap little headlamp that I bring with me. Has a little red light on here right now. If I turn it on, it looks like it's yellow, but it's actually red, blue, and there's white. For like a tripod, you want a nice sturdy tripod. I never follow this rule. I always use the lightweight tripod and it seems like I can get some decent images as long as it's not really windy. Um, I just use my my Peak Design tripod. I think it's it's been fine for everything I've used it with. Um, sometimes I'll just throw a bag in the bottom to kind of weigh it down a little bit, but I haven't had too many issues. There have been some nights, yeah, when it's just really windy or shaky and and it's hard to get like a really good still image. So make sure that you have good conditions if you are shooting with a lightweight tripod or just put a huge heavy bag on it to kind of weigh it down so it's not gonna move. Your ISO settings don't really matter that much because you can always change it later in post unless you go too bright. I shoot everything from 1600 to about 12,800. I wouldn't do anything more than that for your ISO settings. And I would say for full frame too, I just shoot everything between, yes, about 1600 to 12,800. I think those are pretty good ISO settings. For the most part, I try to shoot every, around 1600 to 3200 just to have a little bit smoother ISO. And then if you do need like more size ISO later, you can just kind of fix that in post in Lightroom. It's not gonna change anything if you just lighten the image. It's pretty much like changing your ISO when you shoot in RAW and you're in Lightroom. And that's the other thing, make sure you're shooting all of these images in RAW. You don't want to shoot in JPEG because this is gonna ruin all your images. Usually in Lightroom, I bring my uh, temperature all the way down to just a much better number. But yeah, I always bring my temperature down in Lightroom. I don't usually change that in the camera. It doesn't really matter what your white balance or temperature settings are in, in camera because if you're shooting in RAW, you can just change that later. All right, so let's go ahead and get outside, take this camera with us and head over to the location. There's not anyone in sight right now. It's really peaceful and beautiful. Sunset has arrived right now. I would say this is blue hour. Okay, so I'm sh setting up my first shot right now. I'm shooting with the Sony a6700. It's not a great shot. I got a the 20 millimeter 1.8. Here is my setup right here. You might not be able to really see it that well. This is what I'm looking at. I'm doing everything manual focus tonight. One second, here we go. We're just gonna see how this turns out. Just with my camera real quick, this is kind of what I'm looking at. 
I hope that gives you a little bit of an idea of what I'm doing. There's the image on my camera. So I went ahead and I focused to infinity. I'm at five seconds. I'm gonna change it to six. I think that's gonna give me a little bit better results. And uh, this is the image that I'm getting right here. And it's gonna just take a second to process and everything. It says it has six seconds to process. Much slower than my Sony a7 IV and also the ZV-E1, but this is what the image looks like. Okay, so that is quick tutorial on shooting astrophotography with pretty much any Sony full frame camera, including the A6700. And I hope you enjoyed this video. Please like, subscribe. I will see you in the next one. Have a great day.